Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll. I'm in the studio today to talk about something fun and new, and that is our buddy Cliff at Mog has come out with a two-channel microphone preamp called the Pre-Q2 that's a little different, and it has some, some we'll call it bells and whistles that uh, a lot of other pieces don't have that make it very unique. I had the privilege last night of taking this downtown and recording a great young uh, Americana artist here in Nashville. Uh, we, we have some drums, bass, various instruments going through it, and, and you guys will be able to download those multi-tracks, which is really cool. Before we go to, uh, you know, flashback in time to last night, I want to tell you guys a little bit about the piece. So let me just pick it up here and take a look at it. So at its heart, it's a two-channel preamplifier. Uh, class A, transformer-based, custom nickel transformers. So it's a very clean, fast-sounding circuit. It's not the type 
don't think of it as the old school transformers that's squashing things. Um, it, it, it's fast and modern sounding, but rich sounding, if that makes any sense. But we have some, um, some bells and whistles here. So of course we have phantom power, right? This line switch right underneath it, let me flip this around real quick. And you'll see we have two sets of inputs. We have mic and line. So let's say we have this in our rack and it's wired up to our patch bay and we want to use it as a mic pre. We just leave this in its standard position with the light off and we have two channels of mic pre with EQ, right? Or what if we're mixing and we want to insert Cliff's famous airband across our stereo bus? Boom, all of a sudden we bypass the microphone input section and go right to this EQ. So it can be a color box for our stereo bus, which I think is brilliant. Because um, uh, who, who doesn't want you know, a stereo EQ with, the, with Cliff's world famous high air band in there? Okay, next right here we have a 20 dB pad. So if we have an ultra hot source, you know, we can just pad that down so we're not uh, getting any distortion on the input. Underneath that, we have a high gain setting, which is really useful um, because if you have, let's say an SM7B for a podcast, or you have some vintage ribbon mics that just take a ton of gain, you boom, insert that guy, and all of a sudden an extra 25 dB of gain. So um, you, can, you can really power some low powered microphones. And I will say something about this circuit is it's extremely quiet. I was playing with it last night just to see. I used a, an assortment of different microphones that I know have different uh, noise levels and anxious to hear when I got it back in the mix room. And it is super quiet. Very impressed with the specs on this thing. And then right here we have our phase reverse, which of course is super handy. We have a high pass filter next to that. So we can take it in or out of line. And the high pass filter is continuously variable from 20 all the way up to 200. Okay, so that's really cool because we can combine that. Well, first of all, I think every preamplifier should just have that. There's just too much, you know, almost every source has low frequencies uh, that we just don't want. So let's cut it out on the way in so it's not building up as mud, you know, as we're progressing through the record. All right, so next to that, we have a low frequency EQ. We can go from zero to eight dB of boost, or actually I think it's, oh, a 10, 10 dB of boost. And here's our frequency points. We have 10 cycles, so very, very ultra sub. Then we have 40, 65, 100, 125, and 165 cycles. And this is a bell shape. So what that means is we can combine that with our high pass filter uh, to really shape the, the bottom end the way that we you know, want it to appear. Uh, next to that, we have the button, of course, that engages the EQ section. All right, so now this. Uh, th this is just one of my favorite things ever, uh, Cliff's Air Band. So we can go from zero to 10 dB of gain, just like we could before, but we have our shelving filter up here that starts at 2.5K, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 40. I know what you're thinking. Why would I need 40,000 cycles on an EQ? It's almost one of those things you just have to try. You, you, just trust me, though. If you turn this to 40 and you jack up this on a vocal or a vocal group or even your stereo bus, you just get this air that's just just a it, it's a color colorful air that's just beautiful and clean. It's, it's hard to describe. That is interesting in and of itself, right? We get Cliff's EQ, we get this uh, preamplifier with so many options. But here's something else that's extremely cool. We have an input on the front for an instrument. And you're like, well, that, you know, I've not, I've seen that before. However, you, you can pair the, these guys with something like this. And here's what you can do. This is an active output that buffers everything down to like a reamp level. So we can send this and it's, it's op, op amp powered. So we can drive, you know, uh, long distances. For example, if this is in our control room and we want to send a signal out to an amplifier out in the studio, this can drive it like a long way cleanly. And this output is active at the same time as our other output is active. So we can record our clean vocal and we can you know, record the vocal through a guitar amplifier or a Leslie or whatever we wanna do. So it's just a very unique box. Um, I, I'm really, really impressed with it. But enough of that. Let's flash back in time to last night when we recorded and just see it in action. And remember, enter to win down below, enter to win. What are you gonna win? That lava lamp. Just kidding, I'm never gonna give away that lava lamp. Maybe you're gonna win something like this right here. So be sure and enter to win. What I'm gonna do first is we only have four channels. So I'm gonna capture the drums with the kick, snare, 
and overhead. So we're going to just dial in some sounds and have a good time. By the way, everyone, this is Leah. She's going to be assisting me today. Hi. Thank you, Leah, for your help. And we have Matt. Could you do me a favor and stomp on that kick drum? So here is the kick drum. Let's see. To pad off. Gain that up. Okay. Let's, let's dial in some low end. So let's go down here to 65. Oh, you got to turn the EQ in right here. Okay. Let me dial that in. I'm trying to move my fingers where you guys can see it. Now I'm getting it. There we go. Now, let's see. Let's talk about what we want to do on the high end. Let's go down to 2.5, and let's just lift from there. Let's try that. I'm going to switch it to 5 just so I can hear. Yeah, it's a little too shiny. This Again, this is kind of a folky thing, so I'm not going to try to make this a big rock drum. I'm not going to do that. We're going to leave the high-pass filter completely off. Make sure the high-pass is out. We do have a high-pass filter here, as you can see, that we can engage. But, you know, this is a kick drum, so we don't want that. Nice. I think that's working for me. If you will, just play a kind of a kick snare hat groove. Leah, would you solo up the uh, snare drum for me? How about some snare top? Is that... Let me see. I do have... Okay, let's try this. How am I doing there on my level? A little hot? How's that? I need a little more... A little more volume in the control room here. Okay, we are gonna engage the high pass filter on the snare, and I'm gonna take it up to around, uh, if that's 60 and that's 200, let's go up about here. It's probably somewhere around 80. Now let's go to 100, maybe, let's start with 100. Let's gain that, let's gain that up. Oh yeah, we have to turn the EQ on. I keep forgetting to do that. Oh yeah. Nice. Let's go up to 165 just so we can hear the difference. I like all of that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go to 125, I think. Let's just stop there. Now let's add some snap. Let's start at 5k and see if that's too too low. Let's add some snap. That's actually working pretty good right there. Here's 10K. Yeah, it's too much, too much air, not enough of the um, attack on the head. There we go. Let's start there. A little too bright, possibly, for what we're doing. I'm gonna back that down just a little bit. About 3 dB is what I've got going on. And on the bottom end, I've got about four. And Leah, would you arm the kick track again? On the kick drum, I've got, I ended up with 5 dB at 65 and ended up with 5 dB at two and a half cycles. Let's start there. Now let's move to the overhead. Would you give me just the overheads and turn off the um, kick and snare for me? Is that the overheads? So let's, um, let's gain them up quite a bit. I have the pad on the mics. Maybe I shouldn't have. Let's see. Let's do engage the EQ. Let's just see, they're all the way down. I just, that way I won't forget again, all right? So let's see. You know what, we do have a high gain setting. Let's, let's try the high gain, the high gain setting. There we go. Is that too hot, Leah? Well, I can't back it down. Well, you know, I could. I am close to the top. Well, let's take this out then. Let's just do it that way. Okay. Uh, let's see, left and right, just gonna bring the, I'm not in the sweet spot. I'm gonna need you to help me tell me. Is that good? 
Okay, let's, I've got the 84s up, which are, are not that bright of a mic, but let, let's go ahead and let's, let's high pass it up to around 80, what I think is 80. And then what we will do, let's take the bottom and set it to around 100. And let's, let's add a little, just see if we get any more good stuff down there. Let's try, let's try 125 actually. I'm gonna really gain it just so we can hear it. Oh yeah, nice. Just digging some body out. Now I don't need it for this, but it's, it's definitely doing it if I wanted it. So on the top, let's do, let's do 10K and let's start lifting. We're, we'll, we'll go too heavy just to kind of hear the circuit. Okay, that's about six and a half dB, which is too much, but it's such a smooth high end. I, I just love the airband. Let's, let's go with about three dB, see if that's too much. Let me check one thing. Hey, do me a favor and play your ride cymbal and a crash cymbal and not just the hat. Is that changing my input? Do I need to trim a little? I, I may trim that, uh, that gain down on the body just a little bit on the, on the um, air band, the top. This is the air band right here. I'm getting them confused. Just because it's making that ride symbol just a little dark, just a little woolly. Okay, put the kick and snare in with it. All right, just the kick and the overheads. Let's make sure the kick is in phase with the overheads. I think that's better. I'm not in the sweet spot of the room. I hope it is. We'll, we'll know when we're listening back. <laughs> okay, now would you do the snare in the overheads, Leah? Let's check the snare. So the, the, the kick for me is kind of the foundation of everything, so I'll flip all the phasing according to the, uh, to the kick. Okay, that got worse, so that's better. So that, that, that's proper. So we'll just flip the, flip the phase on the overheads and then the kick and the snare are right. You know, with, that's just all based on the difference the, of, of how far the, the overhead um, symbol, I'm sorry, uh, microphones are. If they're lower, just a couple inches, they, they may be in phase, uh, but we needed to flip the polarity for them to be the best they could be at this positioning. So let's, um, yeah, I'm, you know, let's put the kick and the snare and the overheads together. Kick back just a touch. Cool, thank you very much. Hey guys, so we've had a change of plans. They decided to play brushes. So we're gonna have to gain, we need more gain, right? So let's see if I can see the snare top. Yeah. We're gonna need the overheads a little bit more. That's more. See if I can keep my balances the same. Yeah, I definitely need more. More. That's not bad, right there. Let's stop. Stop right there. All right, that'll work for me. Thank you so much, guys. All right, let's roll one. At Seventy-four. Okay, we have an upright bass today, as you've seen. So let's dial that in. Play for me, Isaac. On the bottom mic, we're not going to do any compression or anything. We're just going to dial this up. And I always watch my input in Pro Tools because I know where minus 18 is, which is analog unity. That looks about right, right there. Let's see. Let's try on the EQ. Oh, that is with EQ. I'm going to take the EQ out because that was left over from what we had last time. Didn't sound bad, though, did it? And I remember, I could always hit the, the, the high gain setting and get more if I want, because it, you know, it looks like I'm way up towards the top, but I, have, I could get an extra 25 dB if I wanted it. But I like that, let's just start there. Yeah, yeah, why not? And let's, uh, can I hear the neck mic, Leah? 
Knick-knack mic only? Yeah, let's, let's do use the high gain setting on that. Uh, yeah, see, it's got more articulation, not as much body. And I'm not gonna high pass, I'm not gonna use the EQ at all. I'm just gonna let it go straight to tape, take that high pass out. I right, put the two together for me. Let's make sure the phasing is really good and accurate. When I hit this, it should just about disappear. Oh yeah, there we go. So that's good. Now turn the neck down a little bit. All right, let's start there. Now let's get the acoustic. Thank you, Isaac. No Isaac. All right, so Max, play the acoustic guitar for me. All right, let's dial in the acoustic guitar. Here we go. Let's get, start gaining this up. And I'm watching the meters inside of Pro Tools, making sure. Okay, that's not bad. Let's do, you know, it, although it sounds, I'm in a weird spot, but let me go switch. Okay, yeah, I got a little phasing issue. I think something, we must have a cable that's wired out of phase or something. Yeah, that fixed that. All right, now let's, let's do engage the high pass filter and cut everything below about 80, just for safety. We don't need any of that puffy stuff bouncing around down there. Now, let's turn the EQ on. Let's go up to 125, and let's, well, it was already, I already had a gain on, so here's flat. I, I like that better, a little bit of, this particular guitar needs a little body. So let's go about 4 dB and 165. Now I know we all love Cliff's Air Band, so let's just give it a listen. Here. Now that's way too much, of course. That is pretty. For this song, though, let's let's start around three, three dB. I'm gonna go up to the speaker so I can hear it in the sweet spot. I'm actually gonna cut that air band down to about two, just for the moodiness of this song. We just not, we're not really looking for an overly bright thing. start there. All right, let's put the bass and record with it. All right, thank you so much, Max. You guys ready to track one? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, let's get the sounds on the piano. Here we go. Hey, John, play for me. So I'm going to gain, just, just like we do on everything else, I'm just going to gain it up until I see the level in Pro Tools that I want. Because I keep the meters set to minus 18 inside of Pro Tools. So I know when I'm at analog zero from my sweet spot. Right there. Now let's engage the high pass filters. We don't want any of that mud that's down there. Let's get everything below set like 70 cycles or so. Let's just get it out of there. On the bottom end, it feels pretty warm already. You know, this song is kind of a moody song. I'm probably not gonna add a lot of high end, but just so we know what that piano, what that air gain sounds like, let's engage the EQ here. And let's gain that up. Boy, that does sound good on a piano, doesn't it? Yes. Nice. But, based on the mood of this song, I'm gonna probably go down, let's just add like a dB of it, just so we say we added it, right? It's too good not to have any of it. That's working for me. Let's start there. Thank you, John. Hey, if I can have the steel guitar, why don't you play for me there, Lucas? Gain that up. Steel guitar players, you gotta watch them. The level they send you versus the level they play are rarely the same. Now, those guys, I tell you what, they like to, like to mess with us engineers. Let's do the same thing. Let's take everything below like 100 cycles out. We do not need that on steel. For fun, let's engage the EQ, go down to 2.5. Let's boost that, see what it sounds like. So if this was a more upbeat, busier track, you know, a, a more modern country thing, I would probably use some of that 2.5K, but I'm gonna turn it down to about right there for this song, because again, it's just a kind of a moody thing. Let's start there on both of them. 
Okay, let's dial in the vocal. We got her in the booth. Check the output on the compressor. I got just, I'm going to tickle it with a little LA-2A style. Not a lot. Is she coming up? Where's she coming up? Let's start right there. Oh, she's got a great voice. Let's high pass it. Just for safety, going to tape, make sure all the plosives and the bottom end Sometimes I junk isn't there. The EQ is out. The and you know what? Based on what I'm hearing, the the she's on a 47. Can't be so. I hate to do anything to that. That sounds so good. I mean, I, I would be possibly tempted to add a little body in the bottom. Just since we're experimenting, let's do that. That's too much. Let's turn that down a little. With a fresh coat of paint and brand new hardwood. I'm gonna leave it at 2 dB. I'm gonna walk up in front of the room where the speakers actually are, so I can make a good judgment here. Tell you how tall I was when I turned in. There's a house on the market in my old neighborhood. I didn't know how turn the piano down a little bit, please. More than two the things you see. And it wasn't easy. That's a good vocal sound right there. She's got a great voice. Let's start right there. Great. Are you comfortable with what you're hearing? Yeah, I feel good. In the live room with the drummer, Matt Mart Martirano, right? Nice, right. nice. That's an interesting last name. Well, what we have going on today is we have uh, Cliff's Pre-EQ2 uh, on the kick, we have it on the snare top, and we have it on the overheads. We're gonna go ahead and capture these other things just, you know, just, just for fun, because uh, we're gonna do a couple extra songs tonight after this filming. Um, but that's gonna be what we, what we have going on. And when you download the multi-tracks, just so you know, we're gonna have the Lewitt 640 Rex on the kick. On the snare, we have good old 57s top and bottom. On the Tom Toms, we have AKG 414s. And on the hi-hat, we have the Lauten Audio LA120. And then on the overheads, we have 84s. And on the rooms, uh, you probably can't see it, but we have the uh, Lewitt 840 tube mics in Omni. So that's, that's what you will hear when you download the multitracks. Being that today is kind of a folky, Americana, bluegrassy country, whatever you want to call it kind of thing, we're going to have uh, upright bass. And we're, we've got the Signal Arts 47 here, and I'll be aiming at the bridge, uh, just off to the side. Here's the F hole, here's the bridge, it'll kind of be in, in there. And then up just a little higher, I'll have the Warm Audio 84 to capture the fretboard, uh, just in case we need a little more articulation. On the piano today I have, it's a Yamaha C7, so those are kind of a bright piano. So I have kind of a dark microphone. I wasn't sure you know, that, that we wanted a bright sound. I've got the AKG 414s. Um, they're not overly bright, and that way if I do want some top end, I can add some of Cliff's Airband. I thought that'd be a lot of fun. So they're in a spaced pair, kind of equal distance from middle C, and um, it, gives, it, gives, it just gives a great stereo image of the piano. On acoustic guitar, I have the Lewitt 640s. I've really fallen in love with these microphones. Uh, they're in um, a spaced pair in cardioid. This one will be right around the neck and the body where they meet, you know, 12th fret area. And this guy will be just off the bridge, a little lower capturing the wood of the guitar. And between them, I can get a nice stereo image, you know, because they'll be in perfect phase. Or I can use either one of them by themselves, and it'll sound great. So it's just a good kind of a, if you don't know what the day is going to be throwing at you, that's just a good, safe setting for a lot of things. All right, now let's talk about the mix a little bit. First of all, I'll just say I, I, I love this song. What a visual. You know, you, you can see this story playing out. Gloria is an amazing vocalist. This is Gloria Anderson, by the way. You can look her up on Apple Music and Spotify. Gloria, thank you so much for... Uh, bringing the boys out and uh, doing this uh, for us. All right, so let's talk about the mix just for a second. For this kind of a song, it, it's it, it's all about the vocal. I mean, it's all about conveying this story to the listener. It's not about guitar licks. It's not about drums. They're just there to support the telling of the story. 
So that said, the drum, some of us uh, that are watching this or whatever probably work a lot of times in genres, uh, pop, rock, modern genres where the drums are hitting and slapping. Um, And and I do a lot of that too. That's a big chunk of my business. But I'm going to play you the the drums in verse two here. And you can just kind of hear that the kick drum is very unpowerful. It's not supposed to be. We don't want that thump hitting the listener in the chest, knocking them backwards. I'll put it this way. When I'm mixing, sometimes I get this visual picture of I'm wanting to push the listener back in his chair with power. Bam! And there's times where I want to suck them in. I I literally want them to be leaning into the song, leaning towards the speakers. And that's this. And one way to do that is kind of to leave the transient information like drums and punch, you know, that drums have very subdued. For, For example, let me just play you the drum package as a whole. So the powerful part, and it's not powerful, is the backbeat, right? So we're, we're identifying the tempo uh, for the band, for the listener here. Here's the backbeat. But the kick pattern is very, very round. It's kind of pushed back. And, and, and again, it, it's all about sucking the listener in. So um, that's something to pay attention to when you're mixing some really organic genres, um, is not to overwhelm them with power because that's what we're used to doing. And, you know, when we watch a video of a Green Day breakdown or something like that. Okay, let's talk about uh, upright bass guitar. Upright, you know, acoustic bass is really booming. Some instruments more than the uh, more than others. Uh, you know, there's instruments that are very, um, just like any other instrument that's cheap, and there's instruments that are extremely expensive. And so it it kind of varies on how much low end thump and woof we you know certain notes really can just make make the instrument just really go off. And a big powerful tool for me uh, for that is multiband compression. Let me let me just let you hear the body mic by itself. Let's go to chorus two. And when you download the multi tracks, you'll get two mics. You'll get that, the body, but you'll also get the neck. Uh, that's just out of habit that I record the neck. Didn't even use it on this mix. We're not looking for articulation to hear fancy played runs. Okay, so what I did in the mix is I used a little tape emulation here with Crane Song Phoenix. I used the dark mode, so it's it's the most round of all of them, okay? But here is the guy I want to show you, multiband compression. So I've got it set to around 250 cycles as the crossover. So, you know, ba- with the curves and everything included, it's kind of 200 cycles and below that are being mostly affected. But I want you to watch the gain reduction in the low end, and it's not touching the high end. So we're, we're just kind of, we're kind of tightening that bottom end and keeping it under control. Okay, so we're getting as much as probably six to eight dBs of compression on the bottom end, and it, it, it's a it's a tighter sounding instrument now. Okay, that that's what I'm trying to achieve um, as they're playing from verses to choruses, bridges, various things, and they're in different registers. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, when the low end kicks in, I don't want it to just get all of a sudden the mix to get flappy and just really you know, and the rest of it uh, be not really have a lot of low end. I want a, just a, a nice consistent package and multiband compression does that. Very minor EQ. You see I'm just dipping out a little bit of what is that? Probably around 180. I mean, it's, it's just barely and also boosting 100. Uh, probably could have actually done without this EQ. Uh, but but uh, the filters for me on upright bass and even electric bass are a big deal. So I've got this set probably around 50 cycles on the low end and on the uh, low pass filter, I'm cutting everything below about 7K. We don't need any sizzle and air on a bass guitar. In fact, I could probably go lower than that. I was just trying to keep a little of the articulation. I remember I I was darker at one time, and I feel like I lost just a little of the fingering that I wanted to to hear to know that it's an upright bass, that it's organic, and that it's acoustic. And then a touch, just a touch of compression, because I track this with zero compression. So when you download these files, you're uh, you're gonna hear basically that instrument and that microphone going through Cliff's preamp, and, and it's raw. I, that, that's the whole idea. I wanted you to hear it unprocessed. But that said, just a touch of this, and this particular unit, 
The reason I like to pull this out from time to time, in hardware or software, it's a colorful unit, got just a little bit of hair, a little bit of distortion. And I thought that that helped this part kind of pop out a little bit, just a little more articulation uh, that wasn't based on frequency, but just grit, okay? Let me show you before and after, bypass. with so yes it's a little more dynamically controlled but i think you're hearing just a little bit of grit that on its own may seem ugly but when you place it in the mix that grit is really helping the instrument kind of find its way through uh, the other stuff let's talk about one more thing uh lastly and that is her vocal. Dang, that's such a great, such a great vocal. Uh, I'm going to play you just a little bit of verse two, and I'm going to show you a couple things. On songs like this, we don't want to do the heavy-handed mixer thing. Um, sometimes less is more. Uh, in, a lot of, in a lot of mixes, um, I'm compressing really hard. I mean, that's what that genre needs. This genre, we're trying to convey the story. To convey that story, the the vocal needs to move around. It needs to be free when she gets loud to seem loud. I mean, it, it's okay if not every word is is like this. And in fact, it needs to be. This is going to sell the emotion of the song for it to be a little dynamic. But we still have to rein it in a little bit, and we also have to pull the tone of great analog circuitry, or in this case, plugins that are modeled on analog circuitry. So let me show you what I have going on here. I will make her dry and I've got a, just a little bit of tape emulation okay I've got multi-band compression and let me show you what that's doing okay here's in bypass there's a house on the market in my old neighborhood with a fresh coat of paint and brand new hardwood okay much in the way that I treated the bass guitar you can hear that she's da da bum ba da so so it's it's a little rangy, a little rangy. So what I can do is I can pop on multiband compression and keep her vocal in a in a in a more contained spot within the mix without that. Watch the low frequencies, especially as she dips in. There's a house on the market in my old neighborhood. So you'll see on theirs and my the low end pumps, and then when she's up in her normal register, which is a little more mid forward. That that um, you know that more presence band we'll call it is compressing just a little bit, which is making it sound a little thicker, right? So when she's down here like this, I'm thinning it out, but when she's pushing and through her mid range, I'm knocking that back a little bit so her tone stays thicker. So I just call this a tone corrector, uh, really. Uh, EQ, not very much going on, just a little bit of a dip, little bit of. Um, uh, there was a, just a little bit of an ugly thing. I, I, I hate to even call it ugly because her voice is so pretty. At around 600 cycles, tiny bit of air, and other than that, just, just filters. This song, a dynamic, right? So there's just a little compression on this, but it was mostly ab about bringing up the expander part on the bottom because there's ends of some of her phrases where she's very tender and very soft. And I'll show you what that's doing. There's a house on the market in my old neighborhood. With a fresh coat of paint and brand new hardwood. So the tails of the words like good and hood are staying up a little bit more, uh, and which is, you know, making that come to the front of the mix, keeping it in the front of the mix just a little bit. For flavor, this is a really colorful box here. And it only takes a couple dB of compression. And I'll let you, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bypass it. I'll play a part where, let, let's go up here where her vocals are closer together. I'll, I'll, I'll unbypass it just so you can hear the difference, okay? Bet there's pencil lines hiding on an old door frame that could tell you how tall I was when I turned eight. There's a house on the market in my old neighborhood. Well, I it looks like I'm bouncing around between 2 and 4 dB of compression. Uh, so it, it, I'm getting the tone of that, but more importantly, she's still able to... So it sounds modern. It sounds rich and compressed but it's still very dynamic as well. Um, lastly, a little de-essing, and one more little trick here, and this is such a great tool for this, Waves uh, C1. Um, sometimes on male and female vocalists, the same, 
you get certain frequencies that 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 cut through the mix a little bit too much and make it sound a little too aggressive on a song that we want to sound nice and pretty. Um, and let me show you what I'm doing. I'm cutting out a little uh, 3,100 cycles, but I'm not cutting it out all the time. It's only when that range gets kind of hot, this is tucking it back just a little bit. I'll, I'll let you see what it's doing, and I'm going to solo up what it's looking for, okay? Bet there's pencil lines hiding on an old door frame that could tell you how tall I was when I turned eight. There's a house on the market in my old neighborhood. So you see it was bouncing around. At times it wasn't doing nothing. Other times maybe 2 dB. So it's just, it's just making her voice just a little prettier, uh, pulling the listener in a little bit more without anything harsh affecting them. Okay. Lastly, let's talk about reverb because I really like the reverb patch that we have going here. But there's pencil lines hiding on an old door. Let me let you hear it in the mix. But there's pencil lines hiding on an old door frame that could tell you how tall I was when I turned it. Let me show you what that is. This is something I have been using for a little while on certain songs. Seventh Heaven, so think Bercasti style. Uh, I think I, it, it, uh, it's the Ice House patch, which is kind of a big patch. But what I do is I just, it just sounds so rich. I cut it down to fit, you know, vocals and things like that instead of like huge orchestral passes. So on here, it's it's only a little over a second and a half, but it sounds bigger than that, doesn't it? And then just kind of, you know, EQ it to taste and let me show you. But there's pencil lines hiding on an old door frame that could tell you how tall I was when I turned eight. But Cutting everything below seven and and a little above 300 cycles, leaving it a little bit more in the mid range. But I wanted just a little bit of that air, so that's why I left it up to, to 6K. But anyway, that's a little bit of insight into the mix. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We had a great time last night. I hope you had a good time watching this. And guys, thanks so much for Cliff and the guys at Mog for sending these over. Uh, we had a great time using them. But remember, it's not just us that got to use them. These multi-tracks are available for download, so you guys get to hear these in action on kick drum, snare drum, overheads, bass, acoustic guitar, piano, steel guitar, that am amazing vocal. You guys are going to get to download these, hear that uh, EQ and that preamp in action, but more importantly, also practice your own mixing chops on this, this genre and a vocal of that caliber. So I'm, I'm anxious for you guys to download these and, and get your hands on them. Thanks again for watching, and happy mixing.